Well, hello again. Time to do some more drawing. So, my name is Jersey Droz. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the links to the stuff I do is right above my head on the screen, and I'll be in the description of the video below. So, what am I doing today? Well, I think you can see what I'm going to do today. So, Monday's live stream, I did some more watercolor studying, practicing with different tools. We did... You know, traditional watercolor, well, traditional watercolor, but watercolors in my little travel tin that I've been using a lot for these live streams. And then I introduced these Neo Color water soluble watercolor crayons to do some of the details, like the Baron's wisps in those scenes. I had hoped to be doing more experimentation regarding penciling today, but I couldn't get my materials ready in time. So I looked around at what I had in the studio, and I remembered that I did this Skeletor drawing recently. And I like it. It's okay. It's a little static, though. I felt like it didn't have like the, the energy that I like to explore in my drawings. It feels very... Mm, it's just it's serviceable. It's fine. So I thought, well, let's do another Masters of the Universe character, but let's see if I can improve on what I was doing before. And, and let's also try out some different materials. I've got today... Jizen Professional Grade Smooth Watercolor Paper... 50 sheets. Good, goodness gracious. I got this uh, at a place in Ann Arbor called Hollanders um, just before I moved to Columbus. So it's a little bit of a... I don't know if you got, how well you can see, but you can see it's got a little bit more texture to it. Right? Um, which makes penciling and inking an interesting experience. So new materials. Also decided to just grab a figure from the shelf behind me. And I saw Evil Lynn. I was like, you know, I, I don't I don't draw her very often. <clears throat> I've been doing this series of Masters of the Universe drawings where they're always in the same pose. And I don't think I had done Evil Lynn yet. So, as you can see, I already got started on it. And I could take the action figure away and put it on a shot so we can just look at this for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pencil and ink this. And then I'm going to try out using the two different kinds of watercolors on it to see what kind of effects I can get. Evil Lynn, the Sorceress of Night. As they say in the Filmation cartoon. Yeah, and you'll notice I'm also using the Filmation cartoon design as my model because I prefer the Filmation cartoon version to all the other ones. Everybody's got a favorite. That's the cool thing about intellectual property with such elasticity as something like Masters of the Universe where it had like the 2002 reboot. Got the new versions coming out from Mr. Smith and then that other one from Netflix. I talked about this before. You can see that the very light structural drawing I did. Um, I was using for that, see if I have it in my pencil case. I don't have any. I, I, I've, I had been using for a long time uh, Pentel Blue mechanical leads, but then I recently switched, and I talked about this in some past streams, the Uni Nano Dia Color Blue, which a student actually pointed me at. And you can see it's much darker, but it erases so darn clean. So I just did my first like little bit of structural business with the Pentel lead. Now switching to the Nano Dia. So I'm trying to do here with the lightning coming out of the out of her, what, what would you call that, her scepter? Just trying to give this like a little bit more energy and power.
I got a head start on this one because I knew I wanted to play with some things I haven't done before. Like, I'm going to try to, like, color the lightning in such a way where I don't actually ink those lines. Because this is something I ran into with this drawing is these wisps, their energy beams on them is supposed to have a color to it. And I'm like, well, how am I going to do that when I do all the art on the boards? So I'm going to need to practice doing analog color holds. I'm worried about those eyes. Looking okay. My eyesight is getting such that like I have to do this and look at my preview image to see how it looks. Uh, need to go to an eye doctor. All right. Are we ready for inks? I think we might be. Only eight minutes in. So what I think I'm gonna do. Let me get a little piece of scratch paper to brushes on. think so I'm going to practice this idea of um, not inking these lines but like using like a colored pen or um, watercolor to define the outline of the lightning and I'm also going to do the same on her scepter there so we'll start by just the bottom of it
All right. Dare we draw the face? <laughs> I'm not going to try it with a brush. What do I got here? I got a 0.7 and a 0.3. Let's start with a 0.3. See what I get. How the face is coming along. Not too shabby. Let's do, so her helmet is just like plain black, but I'm going to do some lighting stuff on this. So I'm going to just, any votes on what color the lightning should be? I'm going to talk about. You know what colors typically mean in, in comic storytelling, but I get some dry brush going. I mean, it probably, since she's a sorceress of night, it's probably not going to be orange lightning. Could be yellow. Could be purple or blue. See what I did there? I don't know if you caught that. I totally had a tangent going on. Eh, it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> I was going to congratulate myself. Be like, oh, look at it. Look at it. I avoided a tangent. Eh, I still got it. That's fine. It's fine. This is a warm up drawing.
Okay. Now I'm thinking. I'm looking at that background. I wonder if I want to make this black. I think I do. I'm going to wet my brush real good. Really squeezable ink chamber. So, as I'm thinking about that lightning, I notice Evelyn's got a lot of purple on her. So, maybe I'll go for a blue lightning instead. I want it to be something not warm. Maybe green. I do green lightning. Why not? Why not do green lightning? I'll do green lightning. Goes down to here. Okay, dry a brush for the next part. And I think I'm almost done inking. Okay, I think, I think we're good. So now, what do I do about that lightning? Let's let's erase the pencils on Evil Lynn while I think about how to approach the lightning. I didn't have this planned out when I started the, or before I started the live stream. I just started drawing her, and then I just thought, well, what else could I do to add some energy to this? And add the lightning bolts, and so I thought, okay, that'll be fun. Now, how do I do it? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to very lightly erase some of these details. Try not to erase too much. I'm 
Okay. Let's start with the green of the lightning bolts. Give them time. 21 minutes. Shall I break out <clears throat> Neo Colors? Let's. I'm also going to scrub some of this green on her. Time to break out the water brushes. And all these other tools can go away. I'll admit to being a tiny bit nervous right now. I don't know if this is going to work. get wet. There we go.
didn't put green all the way to the bottom. Didn't over here either. I think this paper is a little bit more absorbent than what I've been using. I'm running out of water really fast. Okay. I think the green highlights are mixed in. So now let's start mixing the colors for Evil Lynn. And it rhymes. set. Start doing it. Now I know the filmation design of Evil Lynn doesn't have that bright yellow skin, but the toy did, and I always love that. I love the color design in the Masters of the Universe, the original figure line. I just, they, it's such wild combinations of colors. And Beast Man's like bright orange and then the bright blue. And then you got Evelyn with like this bright yellow and then the purple. So it's like complementary colors all over the place. So much visual drama on the characters. Now what I'm going to do is take a little bit of red and mix it in with this tiniest bit. That's too red. There's my tissue to mop that up. Maybe dilute it down just a tiny bit more. There we go. skin color. Let's get uh, a little bit of red for those lips. All right, now the tricky part is mixing the purples. Let's see. So it's a more of a purpley, like a warmer purple for these parts, but then it's the cool purple for like the gauntlets, the what would you call these things? What are these what's it's that go on the upper arm? Okay. So let's start by mixing our cool purple first. 
I already have some over here. Looks like I was mixing blue and my purple. I'm doing the wrong part. <laughs> I can fix that. That's okay. Oh, her collar's that color, too. You can also see a spot in her neck that I missed. Fix that, too. So she's coming along. Let's do, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh yeah, I was going to mix in a little bit of red with the dark purples or the cool purples or shading. Now for the warm purples, which I think I'm just going to use my straight up, you know, know what, you know what I'm going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to break out those crayons again. Crayons. I'm saying crayons like the way Jim Henson said them. Well, when he was playing a character. Someone took the last box of crayons and I want to know why. And it turns out he just wants somebody to show him how to draw the letter Y. it needs just a tiny tiny touch of purple too well violet this is this according to the crayons is violet
Now, now we'll put in some of that. I'm going to mix a red and a purple for some of the shading. There's there's a spot where the color is getting like whipped up by a little bit of texture in the paper. I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. Nothing for it there. That's a weird little blotch. Okay, let's try to do her cape now, which I'm going to start with a wash of purple. A whole mess of purple over here on my palette. Then purple out of my brush so I can just do some water on here and there's still some purple in there I'm gonna put black gouache over top of the purple Hey, Pat, Pat Dan draws. <clears throat> now it's time for black gouache. Let's try one more time to get some of that. To get some of that area filled in. I don't know why it won't. just refuses. All right. I acquiesce, watercolor.
I might go in and, and uh, paint with ink for the underside of her uh, cape, the backside of her cape, because it's all blending together here. I have a little brush out. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll actually pull this off, make this visually distinct. Oh, thank Pat. Thanks, Pat. Pat and draws. Pat Dan draws. <laughs> Man, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it right. Um, no, this is not my own character. This is actually a character from um, the Filmation Masters of the Universe cartoon, Evil Lynn. And I'm just warming up for the day by doing a watercolor drawing of her. But thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you like what you're seeing. Okay, a few more touches, and I can get to the green lines around the lightning, and then I think done. And I'm only 45 minutes in. It's Pat Dandros. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, is this dry enough? No, it's not. I guess I'm going to move on to doing the lightning lines next, and then. Um, Oh, I can do the purple on her staff there. There we go. Yeah, that needs to dry a little bit more before I can go in there with ink. So we'll do... How do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Take my watercolor crayon, make a nice big scribble there so I can work off of that. Get my brush kind of dry. All right, deep breath. Still too wet. Dry out that brush. Wish I had some green wash right now. Or maybe switch gears, try a different approach. Break out my dark green watercolor and see if this helps. No? Come on, you.
Yeah, that is, uh, as somebody who's, old, who's very new to watercolor painting, relatively new, I've only been doing it a couple of years now, it is something that I'm not as accustomed to. Um, well, let me correct myself. I haven't been as accustomed to as of late, because I used to do uh, all my inking with Pro Quills and India ink, and there you do like you, like you work in this area, and then you turn the page around, work on a different area while you're waiting for all, the, all that India ink to dry. So, but ever since I switched to using um, brush pens, dry rather quickly. I haven't had to do that as much. I'm back to waiting for things to dry. i put this in a more convenient place. There we go. Thank you, Pat Andros. I, I'm glad. I mean, that's the reason I do these streams is like hoping that like showing me warming up or working on a project and revealing some of that process can be of interest to some people who like thinking about art. I usually talk more when I'm doing these, but I was getting kind of lost in this one. <laughs> You know, I forgot to paint. <clears throat> Look at that. I forgot to draw the lightning bolt that goes back here, here, because I erased too much. Because something has to connect these bolts to that. And I actually had it. All right. Back to empty brush. I just wipe it off. Then. There we are. Okay, wipe off my brush again, go back to nice opaque. One of the things I used to do back when we could go out in public and be around other people was I would do these little watercolor drawings like this and I would hide them in places around town. So I used to be on a bowling league and in between turns, I would work on a little watercolor and then hide it in the bowling alley. And you can see a lot of them on my Instagram, which is that above me? Yes, Instagram is right above me. That's how where you find it. Um, but it was, it was, it also becomes like a little document of me learning watercolor because I was, I originally, when I was doing the little drawings, I would color them with just a box of Crayolas, which I don't think I have. I usually have a box of Crayolas nearby. Uh, but then I took a watercolor class and switched to doing watercolors for them. And I always try to hide the drawing someplace where kids might hang out, like over by like the claw machine and stuff. Because the comics I make are mostly for children. I have a couple that aren't, but most of my comics are for kids. I'm looking forward to doing that again. That's going to be one of the first things I want to do is just go out someplace where there's people, do a cool little drawing and just hide it. Hang out with other artists, draw together. I miss it a lot. Okay. In the meantime, we have this, right? Break out the wet pen. I'm going to ink in the interior of her cape because... I don't feel like those watercolors were, or the gouache was doing it.
And man, I I timed it pretty well. I'm almost at the end. I got like seven minutes to go. I think she's almost done. I don't want to dry off my brush on the watercolor sheet. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get my white pen working. I was trying this before with my Skeletor drying. to get, add a little extra definition. My white pen doesn't always cooperate with me. I need to get a new white pen. My pen. I think it's almost out. Well, that do it. Put in a few more. Clean up some of these inks, and then I'm going to erase some of the pencils over there. I think I'm done. So for those who are watching live, um, I'm going to be live again in one hour uh, for the Lean Into Art cast where my buddy Rob Stenzinger, game designer and uh, art coach, are going to get together and talk about, you know, what happens, what changes in your art when you add an element of advocacy to your work. Like when you start to say, like, I'm going to do mentoring, I'm going to do some work with nonprofits. And then as far as this live stream, I return... Monday, what is what is Monday? I do this every darn time. Monday, March 8th at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, 7 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> Pens do run out the instant you need them the most. That is true. There's a truth to that. That is like a, a bit of a Murphy's Law thing, I think. Okay, so I, I just want to put one more little green line on there, and then I'm going to call it good. Where are you, pen? Where are you, brush pen? One last green line, and then I'm done. And how? Coming in, three minutes to go. Another element to the, these live streams is I always try to like finish a drawing in an hour. I don't always succeed. Oh, thank you, Pat. Pat Dan draws. I hope to see you on Monday. That'd be cool. I don't know when we'll be working on Monday. Hopefully, I'm going to be working on some pencils of a comic project that uh, I'm currently developing. I wanted to have that for today, but the events didn't line up to where I had all my materials ready. So, and one last comparison. So, as I said at the top of this video, I wanted to do something that felt a little bit more lively than what I did before. And I feel like this one does have a bit more energy to it. I mean, in terms of the lightning, also in terms of the pose, this just feels really stiff and static to me. This feels more, it's got something in it that feels like movement. So, 
So yeah, you came in you came in uh towards the end of this stream, but you know, next time. Uh and all of these get archived on my, you know, YouTube channel. There's a drawing live streams uh playlist that you can go to see all the different things that I do. So thanks everybody for hanging out with me and chatting while I worked on this. Um, once again, the links to everything I do are right above me. RSS.jdros.com is like a feed like I pump all my stuff into. All the videos I do, all of my social media posts, all my blog posts all go there. Um, so until next time, until ne Monday the 8th, I have been Jersey Drozd, jdros.com, Jersey Drozd on Instagram. Okay, bye.